This is Michael Wilson again, and this is George Lazenby on the day his casting was announced to the world press. What follows are interviews with Lazenby before, during, and after his appearance as 007. What really drew you to, um, into applying for this job? Well, it was on the recommendation of a friend called Maggie Abbott, who is now an agent. And the fact that uh, Mr. Broccoli had al already been considering me uh, was to my advantage, I guess, when I arrived there. This is the first picture that you've appeared in, of course, or will appear in. Well, it's the first time I've ever gone up for a picture. You know what I mean, applied for a picture. Does the prospect frighten you? No. no. What worries you most about taking on a multi-million dollar movie like this? Being able to do it well, that's what I'm hoping to be able to do. I just hope that my inexperience uh, won't show. What well, acting inexperience, you mean? More or less, yeah. So I'll get another one, mate. You see, George, and we fit just here. About two inches of less. All right. All right. All right. Action. Ooh. Okay, cut it. George Lasby, the new James Bond. Now, how do you feel about stepping into the ready-made image of a tough guy and an international sex symbol? Well, I must admit it hasn't been bad so far, but um, I gather it has its uh, problems, as I'm starting to find out as I go along. George, obviously there's going to be some comparison between yourself and Sean Connery. How do you think this comparison will affect your image? I wasn't compared with Sean Connery before, and now it can only lead to better things, I hope. Now, before you, you got this role, you were doing commercials for a, a, mm. a chocolate manufacturer. How difficult was the transition? <clears throat> well, it was one of those things. You've got to accept the fact that you've now I've got a lucky break and uh, do it the best you can and just take it as another job. That's what I'm doing, really. I was going along as if, uh, okay, now I'm an actor. How do you feel about love scenes? Do you have any difficulty with those? No, I don't. It, I, it really depends on the girl, I find. If the girl's relaxed, I'm relaxed. But she gets, if she gets uptight and, uh, and finds it a bit hard and uh, she's not moving with you wherever you want to go sort of thing and makes a thing of it, it's difficult. But if you've got a good actress, it, it makes it very easy because uh, most of the girls are attractive and you don't mind uh, jumping into bed with them anyway. So. Uh, just pretend no one's there and go for your life. What about your Australian accent? Do you think there'll be any problems as far as international film goers are concerned? No, I don't think so. I, I saw a film recently with uh, Errol Flynn and he still had traces of an Australian accent and he was accepted. Not that I would be in his class, mind you, but it, I think if, if you do what you feel and, and be natural, people will accept you as, as a person. If you try and be an actor, which I'm not trying to be, uh, they may not accept me because I'm not an actor. Thanks very much, George Lesley. Thanks, Jeff. He's a man who appears to know his own mind and has maintained a stubborn sense of individuality. I asked him how much of the publicity he'd received had been deliberately fabricated. Well, it all actually happened. But what about the reports that you were deliberately awkward and hostile? Yeah, well, they, they were true in a way because I was very uptight lots of, uh, lots of the times because I didn't understand exactly what was going on. And uh, the only person you could ask, who, the only person who knew what was going on was the director. And the director was very busy with his technical things and he had control of two units and a whole lot of things. Uh, and he didn't really feel that uh, an actor was important in the role. He felt that you could get any guy, I think he mentioned on BBC radio, uh, that you could get any guy, put him in that part and make him James Bond, providing he looked similar to what the public feel James Bond looks like. And, th and this came, that vibration came off the director onto me all the time. One of the biggest examples of that so-called hostility was the very much publicized rift between you and your co-star Diana Rigg. Now, what was the truth behind that? <laughs> well, it was, uh, there were some guys standing around the ice rink and she was having a drink and and, and I was tired, and everyone was tired, and we wanted to get the shot over with, and she couldn't drive the car properly, and I got into her about her drinking, that's, you know, and things like that. And she, 
And it wasn't that at all. She felt sick that night. And I was, I was at fault by getting into her, but it was just... I think everyone gets upset at some time. But you felt that this bond should have been a gentler bond. Yeah, I think he should have been more... Um, more humane, more... more um, understanding towards people in general. And uh, he's not such a superman, even though he's been taught karate and judo and he's an expert with a gun and, uh, and he's a physical beast, you know, if anyone wants to tangle with him. Well, how about the director? Did he agree with your idea of Bond? Well, no, they, they had a set formula, which was a winner uh, previous, and you can't blame them for not agreeing with me because I was a learner. I, I felt quite confident that if they did change it, you know, like putting pop music behind it and... Uh, rather than uh, the sort of light music they have. And uh, things like that it would have lifted the whole thing up again into a, an, another uh, decade, 1970. Did they hold Sean Connery uh, uh, above your head all the time? Uh, a lot of the time. It was mentioned when um, he said, remember, you know, it's different scenes. He said, well, when you're there in front of this window, remember how in such and such a scene where Sean flicked his eyes up like that and he did this and that, which is all dramatic stuff, which Sean does as an actor, which he knows what he's doing when he does it, and it works for him. But it doesn't necessarily say it'll work for me. Well, did you feel that you got a bit of a raw deal in the sense that you weren't allowed to express yourself properly? In that sense, yes. But then, on the other hand, I can't complain for because I, um, it didn't come off so bad after all. I mean, what they were telling me to do worked. And yet, on the other hand, what I said uh, I would I would like to do might have worked better and you'll never know that when the film was finished you went on on a publicity tour of the United States which you paid for yourself mm. why uh, on principle uh, I was promised a tour of the United States to publicize the film I was looking forward to it and because of my beard and long hair I wasn't allowed to go I was allowed to go on the condition that I looked like James Bond and uh, and I said, well, anyone, anyone can understand that James Bond isn't a real person. And they're not going to mind the fact that I, that I haven't had a shave for a month. You know, everyone knows that James Bond must have a beard, even though you never see it in the film, if he doesn't shave. And anyway, it, it all ended up, they sent Diana Rigg. So I f went on afterwards and arranged my own tour, which was uh, fun and games, because I'd never been to America. I was more or less going up to television companies and knocking on the door and saying, Hey, uh, excuse me, can I go on your television show? And they used to say, who are you? <laughs> I said, well, I've got this uh, film coming out in a month. They said, but you haven't done anything yet. We can't let you on the show without you've done something. The people want to see someone who's done something. And I said, oh, well, you know, and I chatted them into letting me on there and had a, had a lot of fun. Well, looking back on it now, it's taken up a year of your life. You've taken a few kicks from some of the critics and some of the press. Has it been worth it? I think so. I hope so, anyway. I. I they say I didn't pay my dues, and I think that's what a lot of the kicks were about, by coming from nothing into the film. But I think that film was paying my dues, in a way, all in one year. I was uh, just a scallywag Australian who was wandering the world, and I thought, wow, what an opportunity to change my life. Become famous, you know? Uh, everybody wants to become rich and famous until they become. <laughs> that's it, you said. And I, I, I didn't, didn't enjoy the fame at the time. I, I couldn't enjoy it. I mean, my head wasn't, uh, in one sense, large enough to understand it, but it was growing in another way, where people didn't like me for it. So um, I was a little out of control, you know, uh, from the experience. I mean, doors were opening everywhere. And of course, they closed after I quit the so I had the two experiences, the first one being the better one, of course.